Hey everyone, it's the Vegan Foodie here. So listen, I want to send prayers and condolences to everyone who is affected by the coronavirus, those who have it, and those who have lost family members. I especially want to send love and light to my hometown of Detroit, Michigan, who has been shut down. So I'm praying for all of my friends. I'm praying for all of my family that is there. And I'm praying that we just get through this, okay? So now, today's topic, um, you know, I've been trying to give you more and more of me and more of just my intellectual property and also some of my recipes. First, I want to give a shout out to, to Fashion Nova because this is the outfit from them. I ordered it at Fashion Nova. You still got those shipments coming in, so I love you for it. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about the willpower of the vegan. So a lot of people say, okay, well, you know, being a vegan is hard. No, it just takes willpower. So we're going to break down what it takes to become a vegan and how you can adapt that willpower to make some changes that will ultimately change your life. about willpower let's define it the definition of willpower is to refrain from impulses so that's one of the main things is how are you at reframing from impulses okay so one of the main things for me um, with becoming a vegan was understanding that I had to have willpower that's like, that's one of the main things, right? So for me, it was understanding and accepting that I had to be diligent. So that meant when I went to my favorite restaurants or when I went, because I was in New York at the time, um, when I was passing Crown's Chicken and smelling that chicken, I just, I had to remain diligent in my choices. When I went to the bodega, I couldn't get, you know, the cocoa bread with the beef patty. I had to get fruits and vegetables. So it was remaining diligent and accepting and understanding that diligence is one of the main things that I had to adapt to when I decided to just bring in that willpower to become vegan. So now a lot of people say willpower is hard. I can't just jump into it. No, baby, you need to take it one day at a time. Don't try to be this pro vegan or, you know, follow me. I've been a vegan for three years and I grew up with a vegan vegetarian lifestyle. So it was a lot easier for me. But for you, you may have grew up in a house where, you know, bacon and eggs and all of these things were something that was normal. Pork chops was something that was normal. Beef steaks, steaks, period. You know, um, this may be something that was normal for you growing up, you know, especially those in a black household, you know, fried chicken was one of them things, right? But take it one day at a time. Rome wasn't built in a day. So the perfect vegan body or the perfect vegan lifestyle, I'm assuming could not be built in one day. Take it one day at a time. You know, don't try to just push your willpower to the limit, but baby step it if you have to. For me, it's about building good eating habits daily. So for a lot of my friends that say, I wanna be vegan, what should I do? And I would just say, try one vegan meal a day. Now, one vegan meal doesn't have to be this big grand thing or you have to spend hundreds of dollars or you know, 20, $10, $20 for a meal. You can have fruit for breakfast. Like, try to build good vegan eating habits daily. Start with one meal if you can't do three meals. Start with three days if you can't do seven days. You know, baby step this, but try to eat healthy at least once a day. So for dinner, maybe you wanna cut the chicken out and do rice and beans and greens or a salad with no meat, with vinaigrette 
or with Italian dressing. There's a lot of ways that you can incorporate willpower that will help you to achieve the lifestyle that you're destined and that you want for yourself. Because I assume that everyone that's watching this is willing and ready to make a change in their lifestyle. So if mama didn't teach you this, I'm going to teach you this. Do not compare yourself to others. Don't compare yourself to me. Please don't. Because if you're an infant vegan or you want to be vegan, how are you going to compare yourself to the vegan foodie? And I've been doing this three years. Be yourself. When I became a vegan, I did not try to be anybody other than myself. And I took the steps. I made mistakes, as you guys can see. I was trying food that I thought was vegan, found that it was vegetarian, and all of these things. But be yourself. That was the main thing that helped me to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish was I did not compare myself to anybody. And this is in life, period. You shouldn't compare yourself to anybody, period, because you don't know people's stories. You don't know people's past. You don't know their future. You don't know what they're going through. So be yourself with this journey. Do not compare your day one to someone's day 93. Don't do it. Just be yourself. If you make mistakes, laugh at yourself, and then keep it moving. Now, this one is deep, right? And this is something that I use for myself. Use consequences to help you pursue your new actions. So, using consequences to power your actions, what does that mean? Um, now, there's a consequence to eating unhealthy foods. There's a consequence to not working out. There's a, there, there's a consequence to, you know, having a lot of fried foods or drinking a lot of pop slash soda, drinking a lot of sugary drinks. There's consequences, right? We know there's high blood pressure, there's diabetes, there's strokes, there's heart attacks. There's all type of diseases that come in into the body when you don't fill it with healing, nourishing soul food, right? So use these consequences as ways to power your action. You don't want diabetes. You don't want high blood pressure. You don't want, you know, clogged arteries. You don't want to have a stroke. You don't want to have a heart, heart attack. You don't want to have all of these different ailments that come when you eat bad. Well, use these consequences to power your actions. For me, it was, you know, my grandparents, they died of diabetes. And if I kept eating the way that I was eating, this is something that would have been destined for me. In addition to that, my mom recently had a mild heart attack. So for me, I use those, those consequences as in if I don't, you know, meditate, if I don't um, do things to release stress, such as yoga, such as walking, um, if I don't eat foods, that you know are nourishing the body. And if I eat a lot of fried foods, if I eat a lot of sweets, if I eat a lot of carbs, a lot of starches, then diabetes will set into my system. So it may be like the harsh reality, but sometimes we have to use those harsh realities. We have to be real with ourselves. Use those consequences or use what you've seen happen to other people in your family to change your actions. You have to, like, you got to do it. So you might as well start now. <sighs> now, this one right here, I wrote this down. And when I wrote it down, I felt kind of squeamish by it. But it's the truth. And this is a person with weak willpower risks becoming a slave to their bad habits. Now, do you want to be a slave to your bad habits? Like, for real. Do you want to be a slave to your bad habits? Do you want to be a slave to your bad habits? When you say slavery, period, I know black people are like, oh, slavery, that word. No, we don't want to go back there. So listen, let's use it in the, in, in the present tense. Do you want to be a slave to your bad habits? Do you want to be so dependent on your bad habits to where you can't break away from them? Nobody wants to be dependent on bad habits. People don't even want to be dependent on a bad relationship. People don't even want to be dependent on a job they hate. People don't even want to be dependent on a, on, on a crappy car. So why be dependent on your bad habits? Break it. You have the willpower. Right now we're in quarantine. You have the time. And even if you're watching this after quarantine, 
look, it's time for you to make a change, okay? So listen, it takes a lot of willpower to become vegan. It takes a lot of willpower to stay vegan. And it takes an awful lot of willpower to be around non-vegans. I have a bunch of non-vegan friends, but guess what? They know that I will not budge. One, because I look at the consequences of my actions. I'm 40 years old. There are certain ailments that will stick to my body if I don't take care of it. I want to be here to see my great grandkids, my grandkids. You know, eventually I'm single, so I want to get married. I don't want to be sickly and old and get married and then me and my husband roll over and die the next week at our honeymoon. No, I have a lot of life to live. So I decided to make those changes and adapt the willpower. I've always been one that's been diligent been determined to see my goals through this is something that is just in me but you know for you i just want you to know that if i can do it let me say something you know how people can say if i can do it you can do it you be looking at them like but you already there no baby if i can do it i used to love fried chicken flat out I used to think that Ruth Chris was the best thing, the best day that man could take me to. I used to love eggs in the morning. I used to love omelets. I used to love a good turkey burger. I loved all those things, right? But I decided to make a conscious effort for myself and use that willpower, that that the same willpower that helped me to build, you know, Rain Child PR, the same willpower that helped me to write three books, the same willpower that helped me to work at ESPN or do anything of these things that I've done in my life, whether it's living in New York, living in Vegas, living in LA, living in Atlanta, where I'm originally from Detroit. I use that same willpower to fuel myself for a better lifestyle. And it wasn't just because I wanted a smaller frame, it was because I wanted a healthier life. And I knew that a holistic life and eating bad was not gonna go hand in hand because before me being a vegan, I was into herbs. I was taking collodial silver, echinacea, golden seal, red raspberry, needle. I was taking all of these things, right? But what was missing in my life, a clean eating lifestyle. You know, I can drink all the water in the world, but if I'm still eating fried chicken, then what difference do I make? You know, well, it makes a difference, but let's be honest, for real. Anyway, I wish you guys the best of the journey in becoming a vegan or continuing being a vegan or taking your vegan to the next level, whether it's keto vegan, raw vegan, plant-based solely, Whatever you want to do to make your life better, I'm encouraging you. If you have any questions, if you need someone to help you through this process, you can hit me up on the Instagram and the DM at The Vegan Foodie. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel because while we on downtime, baby, I'm going to be dropping these videos like, like I'm dropping tracks up in here. So anyway, stay tuned for more. It's The Vegan Foodie. I'm out. Stay tuned for more, guys. Peace.